Hello everyone. Welcome to Dental Digest with the Study Boards. This is Dr. Trehan here and today we will cover our next topic in oral pathology viral infections, specifically HIV or human immunodeficiency virus. Now we will talk about its structure, methods of transmission, different stages, how it's diagnosed, its oral manifestations, treatment options and different considerations that you need to have for your dental practice. Let's take a closer look at the structure of HIV virus. Now HIV virus, it's an enveloped RNA retrovirus meaning its genetic material is RNA and then it has an outer envelope and this envelope it contains glycoproteins that help the virus attach to CD4 receptors on the host cells. Now inside the virus is a protein capsid that holds the viral RNA and some important enzymes like protease, integrase and reverse transcriptase. Let's look into the transmission now. Now HIV can be found in several body fluids including blood, semen, vaginal fluids and breast milk and it can spread through unprotected sexual contact, sharing needles or syringes and from mother to child during pregnancy, childbirth or even breastfeeding. So it's important for you to remember that HIV is not transmitted through casual contact so actions like hugging, shaking hands or sharing food are completely safe. Now if we can look into stages of HIV, we can categorize the progression of HIV into three main stages, acute, chronic and then AIDS. Now let's talk about acute part first. The first stage usually occurs two to four weeks after the virus enters the body and symptoms can often resemble the flu including fever, sore throat and fatigue. And in this stage, the viral load is high, meaning that there is very high risk of transmission. Now, early diagnosis and the start of antiretroviral therapy, that is ART, is essential at this stage. Now, let's talk about the second stage, that is chronic HIV infection. Now, there is an important word that you need to remember, that is clinical latency. Now, in this phase, the virus remains active but replicates at lower levels and many individuals might not even show any symptoms but the immune system it gradually weakens and in this stage the viral load is moderate and the transmission risk decreases but it is still present. Now consistent antiretroviral therapy that is ART it helps to control the virus and delay the progression to AIDS. Now the third stage is AIDS. This is the final and most severe stage characterized by critically low CD4 count which is below 200 cells per millimeter cube. Now symptoms are more pronounced with severe weight loss, frequent infections and susceptibility to opportunistic illnesses. The viral load is very high and transmission risk is also very high. Now as far as the treatment goes, intensive ART is crucial here along with treatments for other infections. Moving on to oral manifestations, these are often some of the earliest signs of HIV infection. Now common conditions include candidiasis, that is thrush, oral hairy leukoplakia and Kaposi's sarcoma. Now candidiasis or thrush, it's a fungal infection causing white patches in the mouth. Second condition is oral hairy leukoplakia which is caused by Epstein-Barr virus showing up as white corrugated patches that are present on the sides of the tongue. This is very important. Examiner is going to ask you what causes oral hairy leukoplakia. The answer is going to be Epstein-Barr virus. Lastly, Kaposi sarcoma, it appears as red or purple plaques or nodules on the mucosa. Many times we have seen that the examiner shows you the picture and then you have to understand or clinically diagnose that this is a case of Kaposi sarcoma. So pay attention to this part as well. Now other notable issues include an increased risk of periodontal disease, dry mouth or xerostomia and infections from viruses like herpes simplex, HPV or cytomegalovirus. Let's talk about how we can diagnose HIV. Now the process usually starts with ELISA test which screens for HIV antibodies. Now if this test is positive, it is further confirmed with Western blot test to ensure accuracy. Now for early detection, we have PCR test and nucleic acid tests or NAT. And these two tests help us catch the virus early, even before antibodies have fully developed. Now in managing HIV, we keep a close eye on CD4 count and viral load and monitoring these levels tell us how the immune system is holding up and it also guides the treatment decisions that we have to take. Let's talk about the treatment now. Now the cornerstone of HIV treatment is going to be antiretroviral therapy or ART. 
and this involves using a combination of drugs that work together to lower the viral load in the body to undetectable levels. Now the aim of ART is to prevent the disease from advancing to AIDS, that is the third stage, and to reduce the risk of transmission. Now a more intensive form of ART is heart therapy, which stands for highly active antiretroviral therapy. And this involves three drug regimen that should be started as soon as HIV is diagnosed. This is an exam question. Now, heart therapy it targets HIV replication at multiple points in its life cycle, helping to prevent the virus from developing resistance to the treatment. Now, let's look into various types of medications that are available to treat HIV. First one we have as Ritonavir, which is a protease inhibitor. And this drug works by blocking an enzyme that HIV needs to replicate. Then there are two more drugs, that is Zidovudine and tenofovir. Now both of these are nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. These are exam questions. And they help prevent the virus from converting its RNA into DNA, effectively stopping it from multiplying. Now we also have something that's called non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. And these drugs, they target the reverse transcriptase enzyme. And lastly, we also have fusion inhibitors and these drugs, they block the virus from merging with the host cells. So it stops the infection process right at the very entry point. Now let's focus on the prevention strategies for HIV transmission. One key approach to follow is pre-exposure prophylaxis, which involves taking medication before any potential exposure to HIV. And that is how we prevent any infections from happening. Another one is post-exposure prophylaxis, which is taken immediately after potential exposure, like any accidental needle stick or unprotected contact to reduce the risk of the virus establishing itself in the body. Now, in addition to these medical interventions, safer practices play a huge role in prevention. Practicing safer sex, safe needle practices are essential for protecting against HIV. Alright, let's talk about infection control in our dental practices now, especially when we are treating HIV positive patients. And the key here is going to apply the same standard precautions for everyone. This is an exam question. So what it means? It means that you're going to wear gloves, masks, protective eyewear, fluid resistant gowns for each patient. And these steps are not just for certain cases. They are here for everyone. Now, one of the important exam questions that they're going to test you upon that which ethical principle of ADA actually comes into play. And the answer is going to be justice. So it's all about fairness and respect, giving everyone the same quality of care without any bias. So when we are treating patients with HIV or AIDS, there are some special considerations to keep in mind. First, we have to be aware of potential drug interactions with antiretrovirals. For example, common medications like acetaminophen can intensify the side effects of drugs like zidovudine. So we have to be really cautious about what we prescribe or what we are recommending for our patients. For non-invasive procedures, we generally follow the usual standard guidelines. But when it comes to invasive treatments, things can get a little bit more complex. And if a patient is having CD4 count below 200 or you can say low neutrophil count like below 500 for instance, they may require prophylactic antibiotics to prevent infections. And in these cases, it's crucial to consult with the patient's physician before proceeding with any surgical or any more invasive procedures. All right, let's do a quick recap of what we have covered today about HIV. We started with an introduction to HIV, describing that it's an RNA retrovirus that targets and weakens our immune system by specifically attacking CD4 cells. And if it is left untreated, it progresses to AIDS. Then we talked about the structure of HIV. We also talked about the viral RNA inside the protein capsid alongside different enzymes that can be present like reverse transcriptase, integrase, protease. Then in terms of transmission, we discussed how HIV is spread through body fluids, particularly through unprotected sexual contact, sharing needles, and from mother to child during childbirth or breastfeeding. And we made it clear that HIV is not going to spread through any casual contact like hugging or sharing food. Then we also broke down different stages of HIV infection. We talked about how the first stage is going to be acute phase, second one is going to be chronic phase, which is technically a latent phase, and finally the third stage, which is AIDS. Then we talked about how oral issues like oral candidiasis, oral hairy leukoplakia, and Kaposi sarcoma can be among the early indicators of HIV infection. 
And for diagnosis, we highlighted the common tests used to detect HIV, including ELISA, Western blot tests for antibodies, along with PCR tests to measure the viral load. And on the treatment front, we focused on antiretroviral therapy or ART, as well as heart therapy, which is highly active antiretroviral therapy, which uses combination of medications to suppress the virus and prevent it from advancing to AIDS. Then we also discuss some prevention strategies, especially your pre-exposure prophylaxis and post-exposure prophylaxis and discussed how they are going to be key in reducing new HIV infections. And finally, we touched on infection control in dental setting, emphasizing that standard precautions and importance of justice in your dental clinic. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if this video actually resonated with you, please hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for more amazing content. I would love to hear from you. So leave your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.